Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Over the past year, I have demoed a whole lot of different research-related AI applications and sites. This one, Dimensions AI, is probably the first that I would really characterize as being aimed very much at enterprise. So it's being aimed at big pharma organizations, universities, uh, maybe government departments, rather than the software as a service aimed at an individual. So I've demoed a whole lot where you just kind of sign up with your Google account. If you want to upgrade, then you uh, can pay a little bit per month. This one is very much targeted at big organizations. If you're at one of those organizations, that's great because if they do sign up to it, you'll get access. But for an individual user, you're not quite as much the target here. Having said that, they do offer some non-commercial access for you. If we have a bit of a scroll down, we can see that they've got data sets, publications, really interested in seeing the data sets. You can also see even from the setup of the page, request a demo, it's a very much a, they're wanting to sell to your organization and we can see some of these organizations scrolling past. They really are the big ones. And so, Again, governments, publishers, funders, academics. So it's really aiming at the organization level, but something that if you are working in one of these industries, it might come down to you. Got some of the different examples of things, and some of them, you know, horizon scanning, it's something that we've certainly seen examples of in some of the other AI apps. Finding a reviewers list. As an individual, you're probably not that interested in that, but certainly if you're anywhere that's giving funding, this is pretty relevant. Also, if you have a journal, if you're an editor, you're on the board, uh, organize a conference, things like that, really helpful. And being at an enterprise level, they're offering more customized solutions as well. So let's log in, let's take a bit of a look at what we can see just as an individual jumping in here. So in order to get in, you do need to go through a registration process. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And then you can see that once you're in here, we have a fairly straightforward interface, wee bit busy, but certainly if you are a researcher and you're familiar with things like Google Scholar or the various different commercial database equivalents, uh, won't seem unfamiliar. Uh, across the top here, we've got publications, we've got these other things that we'll do a little bit of explore, particularly data sets. Currently haven't searched for anything, so it's just throwing some articles there. We can see on the left-hand side, we've got a range of different filters. This filtering certainly more akin to those commercial databases than the, uh, the little startup AI apps that we've been using. Over on the right hand side, a uh, bit of information, suggestions of some researchers to have a look at, sources that it's getting, a little bit of a mix there. Looks like it's gonna be somewhat computer science heavy. Uh, certainly a lot of these databases tend to be. Uh, so let's try out a search. Searches, we can look for the full data or full article, title and abstract. Uh, we're not gonna look for the digital identifier. Interesting, the EG is you know, plastic and instrument. That's a very old style of keyword and keyword, as opposed to a lot of the new AI tools where they're actually trying to put in a just a um, research question instead. Okay, so I put in a question just to test it out, and we can see, so I said, does creatine increase muscle mass? And it's just treating those as keywords. We can see that it's yeah, there's a does and there's creatine and muscle mass. So it's just picking those out. It links up to PDFs where possible, lets us add to the library. We have AI summarization, which is one of the really nice valuable things uh, in any of these tools we've been looking at. We've got metrics on citations, uh, a little bit more information about who's talking about this article. Over on the left hand side, we can use our filters. Researcher is an interesting one. It sorts from most widely and the person that's written 175 articles doesn't really tell us if they're good articles or not, but we certainly can see who's active in the area. If not the quality, we can filter for open access and we can see a bit of a mix in there. Uh, let's click on summarize. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it gives us a uh, TLDR, some key highlights. Uh, top keywords as well. So all of this pretty pretty handy stuff. 
and just remember i'm in here just as private free user um, so potentially and at an enterprise level you may be able to negotiate or your organization might be able to get things that are even more streamlined and specific to what you're after but for free this is this is pretty decent so that was all pretty good keep in mind we need to use keywords rather than phrases up here but other than that pretty good Maybe we'll add a couple to the library see if it can summarize across the library okay so what that was uh, if we want to add to library it uses a, another app called papers I'm not signed up to that so I think I will just carry on grants patents clinical trials policy documents are all subscription based but data sets is not and that's also really helpful so again just search creatine and so let's have a look what we've got here okay so this one was a systematic review so I wasn't actually expecting to see real data out of it we can see we get a link to access the repository and it fires us out we can see that it's register of systematic reviews We've got a bit of info about the study there so let's see if we can actually find some real data somewhere in here might need to search for something a little bit different okay so for this one i searched big five personality that is a very commonly used psychology survey and we didn't get a ton we'll go we'll go back a screen and see how many we got in a second uh, first one up 50 item london and swansea set it shoots out to research gate over on research gate it's trying to get me to log in but it still actually gave me the spss file which i guess is kind of interesting because i think the research ethics might not see that as favorable depending on quite what the terms were for this data collection but we can see here a few for fig share Let's have a look what that gives us okay so there is actually a preview of the data this is what it was this is who posted it it's coming from figshare but we've actually got that here inside of the dimensions page so when i searched big five personality i only got 201 data sets and that's nothing this is something that is widely used across all sorts of psychology and social sciences I would have expected a ton more than that even when we're controlling for the fact that most people don't publicly publish their data so this one we can see the data is actually embargoed for another 296 days so not super helpful to us right now if we were studying this though it'd be nice to know that it was there it existed it certainly feels like this data sets is a little bit hit and miss uh, if you haven't tried it, Google has its own data set search, which I've found to be pretty good, a little bit better than this uh, so far. I mean, this is very new though. But if we come back, publications, this looks like a really handy resource for that. And I think for those of you who are in research areas, and it could be something that your department or your library is going to be getting, then some of this other stuff patents clinical trials in particular possibly policy documents if you're involved in government work is going to be pretty handy so that's it for today just a brief demo of the site something where i'm going to do a little bit more exploring possibly come back and do a more thorough deep dive of what we can find and what we can use inside the site both as an individual user and i might investigate see if i can find anywhere local that uh, might have actual uh, institutional access as well and try and contrast what that is like so that's it for today this was dimensions ai certainly looks like it is going to be a very powerful and useful research tool i'll be back really soon with more videos on ai research stats and random stuff